Hello. How are you? It's Jeannie. I truly hope you're doing well. Some of you write to me and tell me about some of the tough things you're going through and how you put the videos on that I do kind of as just background noise, soft sounds, nurturing sounds, um, or you even listen to the content and some of it makes you feel better. And number one, I love hearing that, but I'm glad that what I do helps some of you, even a little bit. And I'm honored when you share that with me and tell me about that. I, I really appreciate it. And I'm very glad you have a little something that helps. So, I mean, life is tough. College, um, school, high school even, some of you. Um, graduate school, jobs, moves, transfers, work, you know, all these things, families. <laughs> you know, stress has come at you all the time from all kinds of different directions. Um, health challenges. And the thing I feel about health challenges is you do what you have to do. You find out what you need to find out. And then you just put one foot in front of the other and you get it figured out with the best people that you can, you know? And I know several of you are doing that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you for the strength that that takes. And I, and I do know. So, um, also something is I'm getting closer to a hundred thousand, which is just a, a wonderful goal that I just want to get to, you know, for no reason other than to get that silver plaque thing <laughs> hang on my wall. So if you haven't subscribed and you're watching this, hit that subscribe button. I don't often ask for this. There's a, a fellow I follow named Trevor Colt. Um, and uh, he's a Scottish fellow. And he always says, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, why not? It's free. So it's free. You can subscribe. <laughs> I've waived the initial subscription cost for you. So anyway, I just want to see if I can somehow push it to get there. So I, I hear from other YouTube um, creators, content creators, that this is kind of a slow time of the year. So I just want to get things rolling and get into the warmer months with a great goal for myself. I have others, but this is one. So thank you. And if you are new here, welcome. I know some of you are brand new and you've let me know that. And I just say welcome. You're in a great community and you're going to see that. Um, the, the comments, you'll see these people in the comments and they're just so lovely. I've been very, very lucky and I don't get trolls. I haven't. A couple. They're easy enough for me to take care of. <laughs> and, um, but it's such a great, supportive, wonderful, warm community. So welcome and you will see. So, and for those of you who have been around a while, welcome back. It's good to see you. I am finding black hair all over. I don't know why. And, and little things left around. I mean, I, I, I don't know what this is all about. So, anyway. Now, speaking of that, la, um, that past video, the beauty school and the countess, she will be back, the countess. She has... Uh, a few things up her sleeves to show you and uh, share with you. So, 
she got a she got a lot of great feedback, and she's very happy about that. And uh, Bertha, her client, has not been heard from, so I don't know what happened with her. I think her neck was broken or something. So today's video is really a blah 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 of soft spoken things that are some of my favorites in the past four to six weeks and that I just wanted to share with you whether you check them out. Um, nothing is sponsored in this video and I love my sponsors. Make no mistake, I love my sponsors and I love their products. Um, but anyway, there is nothing sponsored. This is just my take on a few things I wanted to share with you. And um, you can pay attention or you can just zone out to the droning of my voice and just know that it's of some interest and you can come back another time and check out the things. So the first item I want to talk about as a favorite is a book. Now, at this point right now, I would hold up the book, but I don't have the book. I read the book and my mom is now reading the book and she went to go spend the night at a friend's house. <laughs> Every other week, she spends the night at a friend's house because she volunteers at an old folks' home. My mom's 80, almost 85, and she volunteers. And so anyway, she took the book with her. So I'm going to put an insert in here for you to see because this book is different, and I'm going to tell you why. Most of the time when I close a book, I'm done. I don't think about it too much. Um, I may think about the plot a little bit or whatever. But this book has been on my mind. I finished it about two weeks ago. And it's just been on my mind. And the name of it is Miss Virginia and the Sweet Sisters. And it's by Donna Lawrence. Now, that title mean, gives nothing away. It means nothing in terms of what the book is about, except the characters, a couple of the characters. And, but like I said, this book grabs you from the very beginning and you think about it all the way through. Donna Lawrence describes her characters so well. You see them. You feel them. You understand them. You like them or you hate them. And there's even one, honest to God, I can smell him. Go figure. Anyway, it's set in 1967 in a little town called Paris, Kentucky. And I know this area a little bit because my um, sister-in-law and her family just moved to a city not far from there. And it's called, <laughs> in Versailles in, Paris, in uh, France, this is called, spelled Versailles, but it's, it's, it's um, pronounced Versailles. <laughs> so anyway, I laugh every time I talk with my sister-in-law. How are things in Versailles? But that's how they pronounce it. So anyway, Paris, Kentucky isn't too far from there. So let me read to you what the author says about this book. Because I found this very, very apt. For a mixed race girl in 1967, acceptance amid life and death is hard won. Growing up with different skin color shouldn't be difficult. So why is it that Lindsay always feels other than? These are the sentiments of mixed-race 13-year-old Lindsay Hollis 
growing up in 1967 in small town Kentucky, where interracial racism proliferates and where a long ago murder still haunts the town. Lindsay longs for acceptance, but because she looks white, she is plagued by bigotry from her small circle of black friends. Not long after Lindsay befriends two mysterious elderly ladies and their teacher friend, she learns that a psychopathic killer has returned to the town. Now Lindsay and her friends are being stalked. With the specter of sinister premonitions and secrets that need to be kept, Lindsay must find a way to bridge the social and racial divides that separate them before the killer strikes again. And time is running out. So, in this book, Miss Virginia and the Sweet Sisters, we are immersed in the world of Kentucky bluegrass, horse country, coming-of-age wonders, and mysteries of life experienced by a young girl on the cusp of young adulthood. The backdrop of murder and the seedy side of small-town life heightens the suspense interwoven with the racial tension of the late 1960s civil rights era Kentucky. It gives an insightful look at female relationships, the resiliency of female strength, and reflections on racial relationships chips as they evolved in America's not so distant past. Um, so that is her synopsis on Amazon. And is it, is it that's a very good synopsis, but there's so much not said. So if you want a really, really gripping read, um, Miss Virginia and the Sweet Sisters by Donna Lawrence. And you know, it's funny because I grew up in a um, very mixed-race neighborhood, um, San Jose, California. You know, in the east side, in the east side San Jose. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think there were neighborhoods that weren't mixed-race, you know? And it wasn't something we even thought about. We just, some kids were brown and some were black and some were Asian and some were white. That was just that. And you played with whoever happened to be outside at the time. So I didn't understand racism, racism until much later in life. But then racism within a particular community is really interesting. So a girl who is part Creole, who is whiter than her friends, you know, got picked on. So it's just an in interesting take on that. So that's a lot of blah, blah, blah about a book, but it is a book worth reading. I promise you. Now, if you read it, I ask you two things. One, let me know. And number two, leave a review on her, you know, on her Amazon page. You know, when you get a book on Amazon, you can leave a review because this is her first book, number one. So she needs the support. And our writers, authors, are basically artists. And artists sometimes have to wear many hats, and those are difficult. So, you know, here they come up with this wonderful creation, but then they have to go out into the business world and be a business person, and that's kind of hard. My, I come from a very artistic family, and I know this for them. And so when they hear our positive feedback, it helps just put more wind under their wings, and they need that. So I left a review on her Amazon page, and I hope you do as well. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy to recommend that book to you. So there. Okay, so, you know, I don't script these things. I just talk off the cuff, but I do have a little checklist of things. 
Now, a lot of you ask me what mic I use, and I've tried a few different mics, microphones, and this one is the one I use. It's Rode, R-O-D-E. I think I spent $49 on it. So for those of you who are wondering and, you know, want a mic, I love this. Um, I think it captures my voice really well. I think, you know, six, eight, ten inches away, it captures my soft-spoken. I've been very happy with this. So R-O-D-E, Rode. I had the one on the stand that, you know, you can talk into, but um, I can't remember the brand. But anyway, I like this little guy. So, now. Another favorite of mine that I've been watching a lot on YouTube is a young YouTube channel called Ploys Thai Life, P-L-O-Y apostrophe S, Thai, T-H-A-I, like Thailand, Life, Ploys Thai Life. And Ploy is this beautiful Thai woman who, she does yoga and Thai massage, which I didn't know was different, you know, from any other massage. And, um, and it, it's just really quiet, introspective, really lovely photography, sound, and visual. And it's just the, all those three things come together and I just find myself kind of like watching and just enjoying it. So check out Ploy's Thai Life and... Um, say, hey, Jeannie said to come knocking, <laughs> okay? And it's, it's a different kind of ASMR. There's not a lot of talking, but there is a lot of whispered Thai chatter, which I love. I love foreign talk, you know? There's that Ecuador Live, those um, gals down in Ecuador that do the massages and they hit with the branches and pieces of wood and things like that, softly. And I love them. This is very much like that, but much more, I don't know, um, I don't know what the word is, colorful, it's sweet, and I just, I just adore this channel, so check it out. Now, another favorite of mine is, and, and this is in a weird category because it's totally not ASMR. We went to a show at uh, Mandavi Center in Davis um, not too long ago. I took my mom, and it is a performer. And she is one of my new favorites. And her name is Meow Meow. Like meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Apparently, she is a follower of mine, and I help put her to sleep at night. Well, she invited me and my husband and my mother to come to her show. And it was a great, great night it was a little cabaret, a little burlesque, <laughs> in the funniest way. And uh, she is such an amazing performer. So if you are, you can check her out, Meow Meow Revolution. She has um, collaborated with Pink Martini. Her voice is outstanding, Meow Meow's voice. And she's an amazing performer, an amazing sense of timing, and it was just such a fantastic evening. So check out Meow Meow Revolution and see if she's coming to your town. I think from this point forward, I think she's headed up to Alaska from here. She 
just came through California. And I'm so honored her for inviting us. And, and uh, I got to meet her after. And it was just fantastic. So, meow meow. <laughs> How can you not love somebody called meow meow? All right, now, uh, back to another couple channels, just real quick, and I know I've mentioned them before on other videos, but I really think they're worth mentioning again, and this is off the top of my head. I don't even have it written down. Uh, I just have Ploy's tie Life written down. Old school ASMR sounds, Christina from Romania. I think she's a friend of the Countess's. For some reason, the Countess seems to like her. Anyway, she, she just has a fantastic channel that I'm a little addicted to just for the... I love her soft-spoken and, and her whispers. And I'm not a big whisper person, but her whispers are, are good. And, of course, Lori Latte. She just... She puts stuff out there. <laughs> that girl makes me smile. She has a spark, she has a light that she shares with this world. And she puts out lots of content. And I really want to see her channel grow because she deserves it. So Lori Latte, ASMR, check her out. Um, and of course, Christina from um, Old School ASMR Sounds. So those are two that, you know, and uh, Brittany ASMR, of course, you know. And Brittany um, took some time off to have her family and she is back doing ASMR and I, you know, people change in a decade and so there's a whole new turnover of her audience and so I hope, you know, you're following her. I've mentioned her before and I just adore her. So, like I said, I know there are others and I'm forgetting probably three or four really great ones, but I'm sorry. Those are off the top of my head. So, uh, now, a couple things. <sighs> when I was doing laundry the other day, I was putting my stuff in the drawer, and I thought, I need to share this. I've mentioned it before. So fabric softener and, you know, uh, detergents and things like that, I want to show you something. For my detergent, I use that 7th um, generation uh, for the liquid soap. But for the um, softener, I want to show you what I use. White vinegar. White vinegar. And I buy it at Costco. That's, for those of you not in America, that is a huge... Um, warehouse type store and you can buy you get two of these big suckers for you know four or five bucks whatever it is I don't even know this I got at Rayleigh's which is a grocery store around here but I'll get them at Costco as well because I go through them but I put this in the softener container and your stuff doesn't smell like vinegar when you use regular liquid softener, it actually coats your clothes in a plasticky type thing, and I don't know if it's technically plastic. That's my interpretation for you chemists. But also your dryer, yeah, they smell great, but that smell is a chemical smell. It, it just is, and I love smells, I do, but the smell I want on my clothing is my perfume, not downy or whatever it is. Okay. So this, you know, you smell it. Sorry. It smells like white vinegar. But it naturally softens the fat, the fibers of your clothing. So you don't need, come here handsome boy, we have an intruder. <laughs> it's okay sweetheart, you can come. Um, anyway, so white vinegar. Try it. Try it for a couple of weeks. It's cheaper, it's better for your clothes, and it's better for your appliances. 
Now, something else I use on things like sheets and towels and dish towels or my husband's pants when he's been working out in the yard grease and things like that. And I put this in the pre-wash and in the bleach section in two sections. Pine salt. Pine salt. The real deal. And this I also buy at Costco in the duo. Now, I love the smell of pine salt. There are people who do not. I love it. I love it. I clean my counters with it. I clean, you know, I put it in a just a big spray bottle with water. And I, every day I, I you know, spritz up with pine salt. And it dissipates very quickly. Just like the vinegar, it does not leave a residual um, smell like pine salt, so you don't have to worry about that. It, um, it leaves a very fresh smell. And between the vinegar and the pine salt, your clothes smell fresh, so fresh. And what I found is, you know, you have to clean your washing machine, especially if it's a front loader. You know, behind all those, you know, rubbery things, gunk gets in there. And so I, I clean it mm, every month or two. Uh, two, yeah. And, but still, some of the towels, if I don't do this protocol, the towels could start smelling musty. This takes care of that. So, white vinegar for your fabric softener and pine sol in place of bleach and pre-wash. Now, if you have to bleach something, you use chlorine bleach, I guess. So, there. Okay, here's a couple of other things that I am just really jazzed about. Look what I got. In this little fabric -y thing, this is... Twelve reusable bamboo cotton rounds. Now, I use that micellar water. Oh, I meant to bring one in here. It's, anyway, these are all reusable bamboo. Ugh. What a concept, huh? I use, I go through two or three a night, normally with cotton rounds, but with these, you know, you just there's a dozen of them. You can wash them. And Pine Sol is great at getting out grease and stains and whatnot. So for mascara and, um, and look at this cute little mesh. Um, you could wash them in this. So I love this. This is a new favorite for me. And it's made by... There's a... It also comes with a travel bag, a travel bag and the laundry bag. So look at that, just a nice muslin bag. And it is made by, that makes sense, Net Zero Company, like the name, Net Zero. So, there you go. And another thing that I think is so cool because Traveling. Look at this. It's called Splash Foaming Hand Wash Tablets. So, we've got a lot of travel plans coming up for the rest of this year for 2023. And given my history with having colds. I'm doing everything I can to wash my hands all the time. And for on the go, look at the cute little, it's a little tab. I'll open it. This looks like a piece of candy. And you just use it like a bar of soap and it foams up. You foam, you wash your hands and it's gone. So, it's got a nice citrus smell. So, I'm going to be stuffing these in my purse because we're doing a lot of traveling, a lot of driving, a lot of airports, a lot of, lot of. So, 
you know, <laughs> I'm going to have to make sure this gets put away because I you something that happened once. I went through a phase of making these bath bombs. Oh. And um, one time, one of our boys came over, Jonathan, yeah, and he walked in the kitchen and he saw my bath bombs drying on a cookie rack. And he said, oh, what are these? I said, leave them alone, they're cooling. And he goes, can I have one? And I kind of thought he was joking, and I just kind of joked back, sure, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, he took one, and he took a big bite out of it, and it started foaming up in his mouth, because I mean, it had that, you know, foaming stuff. It was full of Epsom salts, and, and uh, all the things when it hits water, it foams, and his mouth starts going, what is this? So anyway, I'm going to see if I can find the picture and put it in here. <laughs> I find things like that pretty hilarious. He didn't at the time. We look back at it and laugh now. It's maybe 10 years ago. So don't take a bite out of something. I should have been clearer. I should have been clearer. Um far as tea, you know I'm an Earl Grey fanatic. Um, I'm almost out of my Betty's um, tea for the loose leaf. And um, so I've been making it last, but I've also been having this Harney and Sons and it's Earl Grey Imperial. And oh, look at that. It's loose leaf. And what I've been doing, rather than always putting it in the pot and then straining it, I have these right in front of me. These little muslin bags. And you just put in your amount into this bag, pull it, put it in your hot water and let it steep. And then when it's over, you can, you know, rinse it out. And it's reusable, so, you know, I, I really like that. And then I, for, for regular, you know, just plunking my a tea bag, I've been, the, the Numi Aged Earl Grey, as well as Stash. And, um, and then this, um, the Republic of Tea Decaf Earl Grey. You know, after two o'clock. Oh, I love that smell. Oh, I guess it's the bergamot that I'm just head over heels in love with. So. I use this in the afternoon, and this is really good. You can't tell you're drinking decaf, but I do have two per cup because I have a higher tolerance, so I need two of these in, a, in my mug. So, that, that is my little favorites for today, for this month, for this six week thing. And I just wanted to pop on and share some of those things with you. I have some other videos coming up that I think you will like. Sorry, it isn't the Countess yet. She's coming. And um, <laughs> I have to tell you something. After I was done with that, okay, you know my makeup, all the black, you know, the roller, <laughs> the roller in my hair. I was in my office completely, you know, wearing everything and my mom comes toddling in asking me something and 
she's talking with me. And I look at her. And I'm the countess, right? And she's just talking away. And I said, Mom, does anything look different to you? You know, and I'm, no, honey, what, what, what's different? You know, what are you wearing? It's like, Mom, have you ever seen me dressed like this? <laughs> she, she had no idea I, I was any different because she's looking just like straight in my eyes and... I love that about my mom. She doesn't see the outside. She only sees the inside. And I think that sums it up more than anything. You know? And something else that I'm really grateful for about my mom, and I just thought about this right now. Growing up, as I've gone through these magazines with you, There is that thing to be skinny and thin, you know, you're five foot, what was that, Who? Susan Day, oh, five foot eight, going from 127 to 88 pounds, you know. When I went through phases of trying to be thin, because I thought you had to be in order to be a worthy girl, uh, you know, teen, whatever, my mom never, never, not one time did she ever say, wow, you look good, you know, for having lost 10 or 15 pounds. Never. She never once complimented me on what I looked like. Never. And I remember, like, being so thin and thinking, how come, you know, like, walking by and why doesn't she notice, you know, gosh, I'm so skinny. And, nope. She never commented on what I looked like. And by the same token, she never commented or said anything whether I, if I was 20 pounds over. You know, it just didn't matter to her one way or the other. Looking back, I see how important that was. If I had gotten parental approval on being skinny, I think it would have set it in that that was the thing to do. And they never did that. Never. One time my dad made a joke. I was wearing something brown and he said to make sure to turn on the beeper. Hear <laughs> the beeping if I back up. But that was my dad. And, and I laughed about that as hard as he did, you know, like a UPS truck. Um, but it, he never said anything about my weight. My, my mom never said anything about my weight or my makeup or my hair or my looks. Behavior, my heart. My soul, my spirit, yes, I got um, I got schooled on that, but never on my weight, and I am so grateful for that. So I'm gonna have to thank my mom for that when she comes home today. So, in light of all that, I'm going to sign off, and I want you to know that you are okay. This is a Mr. Rogers moment. You are okay just the way you are, whether you're 25 or 50 pounds or 100 pounds over or under, because there are people who struggle to keep weight on. You are okay if you wear makeup or don't wear makeup. You are okay just as you are. Your looks don't matter. I mean, you know. You brush your teeth and brush your hair before you go out, but, <laughs> you know, it's who you are inside that counts. And I just want to remind you of that, okay? I wake up looking pretty, mm, pretty scary sometimes. I know, I, I hear people say, oh no, you couldn't. I do. This is makeup. This is, my hair is brushed and, you know, truth be told. I look more like the Countess when I wake up. The hair and everything. So, it doesn't matter. Who you are inside is what matters. How kind you are to others. You're evolving in terms of your heart and your spirit. Those things matter. And we're always learning and evolving. I am. So... 
Okay. I will sign off for now. Make sure to hit that like or no, subscribe button. And I want to see this channel growing. Just get over that hump. Rest well. Sleep well. Dream well. Be well. And I will see you very, very soon in the next video. Bye for now.